Hey there, so let's first look at uh, the first and important service which is identity and access management service or IEM service we call. Uh, the most important component in that identity and access management is Azure Active Directory. So the Azure Active Directory is a cloud-based suite of identity and access management capabilities that enable you to securely access your Azure services and there are different types of services you can securely access and any other resources for your users who are trying to access cloud. It also provides authentication, authorization, device management, multi-factor authentication, and can also integrate with your on-premise Active Directory or, or can also protect your on-premise resources as well. Now, one of the common questions we get is, is it exactly similar as Windows Active Directory? And answer is no, it's not exactly the same, but there are, if you see in the diagram, you will understand that both these Azure Active Directory and Windows Active Directory do your users and group management, authentication and authorization part. Where they are different is that Windows Active Directory, which is you do on on-premise, also supports Kerberos and NTLM. Now, again, if you are not from a security background, you don't need to worry about Kerberos and NTLM, which are more for zero sign-on um, and other things. Whereas Azure Active Directory is more for authentication based on SAML, which is security assertion markup language, OAuth, OpenID, and Web Services Federation. These are all for um, authentication for web services and different type of protocols. These are all authentic authentication authorization protocols, and these are used to protect your cloud-based applications. So that's what Azure Active Directory is being used, and it's available in your Azure account. Now, this Azure Active Directory can be used to protect your SaaS applications. It could be like for Salesforce, Dropbox, Oracle, SAP, any other cloud-based applications can be protected using Azure Active Directory. You can also use to protect your cloud-based services. So for example, you are integrating, you can integrate it with your AWS console or Google Cloud or Oracle Cloud or any other applications to integrate so that they can authenticate via a user in Azure Active Directory. You can also use it for integrating with on-premise legacy applications. You can also integrate with Active Directory on-premise, and I'll explain you in a minute how. You can also protect your, your on-premise resources like Workforce or Salesforce or any other application with Microsoft Azure Active Directory, which is on cloud. Now, there is a concept of called Azure Active Directory Connect. And if you're part of Azure uh, Solution Architect or Azure Administration AZ-104 or Azure Solution Architect AZ-303-304, probably might be going deep into this. But there is a, something called Azure AD Connect Server, which will be integrating your on-premise Active Directory with Azure Active Directory. That um, you can sync. And in um, both these trainings, we also have a hands-on lab if you're part of those trainings. Now, one question I get repetitively is what, how the Azure Active Directory is related with your subscription. So we saw earlier that there is an Azure account. That account can have multiple subscriptions and subscriptions are used to res or group your resources so that you can apply some policies or billing around that. So with each Active Directory, you can have multiple subscriptions or a subscription is always associated with the Active Directory, but a subscription can only be associated with only one Active Directory, whereas a one Active Directory can have multiple subscriptions. And we're going to see you when we go inside the portal in a minute. So what Azure subscription does? Azure subscription has a trust relationship with the Azure Active Directory. So trust or a subscription trust Active Directory or Azure Active Directory, better to say, to authenticate users, services, and devices. So when you're protecting any application or resource that is inside the subscription, um, whatever subscription that is linked to the Active Directory, you can authenticate or you can protect your resources through that Azure Active Directory. So multiple subscriptions can trust same Azure Active Directory, whereas each subscription can only have or only can trust single Azure Active Directory. So that's the relation which people get confused. Again, if you're watching this as a beginner and if you're getting confused, nothing to worry about. Assume that this is just for your knowledge purpose. If you're part of Azure AZ-500 or Azure Active Directory or Azure Solution Architect, we probably might be going deep into this.
and this is how the Azure Active Directory on console look like. Let me directly connect to you there and then I'll show it to you. So this is I've logged into my Microsoft Azure Cloud Portal. Now later at end of this module, we are going to create a Azure Active uh, Azure Cloud account and you'll be first creating a free trial account. I'll explain you how to do that. But here you search for Azure um, Active Directory and this is where you have Azure Active Directory. Now within Azure Active Directory, there is a different um, licenses. There is a B2C, but I'm not going to cover that B2C or identity protection. For now, I'm just focusing on Azure Active Directory. You click on this and this is where you see all your users, groups, and then if you want device management to protect your devices, you can see that as well here. And this is what I was talking about as your Active Directory Connect. To connect your uh, with your on-premise Active Directory, you can, you can sync that. So later, in if you're part of, as I said, 104 or 304, 33304, we're going to configure this Active Directory sync. So this is where you will see all the users. And these are some of the users we have, which we have defined in our, uh, in our account in here. Now, so this is my default Azure Active Directory, which is configured here. I want to, if I want to change my directory, I can click here and say switch directory and it'll give you me all the list of subscriptions. So with my sub by default, it's my the directory, which is configured is k20academy.com. And I can say, I want to uh, just with this particular one, I can say where exactly is this, um, so currently I only have one active directory controller. I can go and create more active directory as well. So I'll go and within a, an account, I can create a more active directory. And when I say create a tenant that actually I'm creating an active directory and I can link this active directory with a subscription. Now I'm not going to do it here, but this is where just to show you how to create an additional active that as your active directory on that. This is where you can create additional users, guest users, groups or applications. And there are other things which you can do here um, on this as your active directory. So that's pretty much as your active directory, just to do a quick recap or identity access management where you, this is a cloud based identity management capabilities that enable you to securely access your resources on Azure cloud or on premise. And that provides features like SAML, OAuth, OpenID for authentication and authorization. You can, you centrally manage all your users and groups. You can connect this Active Directory with on-premise, cloud, cloud-hosted applications, legacy applications, or on-premise uh, resources or Active Directory. And there's a AD Connect, which will help to integrate your on-premise Active Directory with Azure Active Directory. Now, sometimes if you confuse what is on-premise, which is nothing but your customer data center here. And this is how your Azure Active Directory is linked to the subscription. Now. In the next lesson, we are going to focus on compute services and compute is nothing but uh, something that provides you memory and CPU or processing power so you can run your application. And there are different things available or different options are available, which are virtual machines or your app services and then other functions, logic apps and Docker and Kubernetes. I'll cover all this in next few lessons. So I'll see you in next lesson. Well, this was our Azure cloud expert, Mr. Atul from Team K21 Academy. And this clip was taken from our free course for Azure beginners. Even if you're a beginner, this course will give you a holistic overview of Azure cloud, Azure DevOps, Azure data, Azure security, and whatnot. And if you're already working on Azure cloud, then this course will help you to revise your basic concepts. In order to subscribe to this course, all you have to do is just go to k21academy.com forward slash Azure and subscribe to this course. And within 50 minutes, you'll be getting an email. Under that, you'll be getting your login credentials and our WhatsApp group where you can ask your every doubt related to Azure Cloud. Thank you, and I will see you in the free course.